Hi, welcome to another one of my videos. If this is your first time here, I'm Adrian, your host and your guide through this video. So grab your sketchbook and let's get started. On the screen is a list of all the materials you will need. I also post the materials on the description of the video. For the paints, I use a brand called Folk Art and those are the names of the paints, but any paints that are closing color work. We're also going to be mixing colors for the first time on my videos. It has helped me heal from loss, deal with thoughts of anxiety, and just general day-to-day -day stress. I'm not a therapist, but I am sharing some simple mindfulness and art techniques to help you relax and unwind because I would want you to experience the therapeutic benefits of art like I do. To do this, we need to set the right tone and set up our space and our surroundings. I usually get some tea and put music or sometimes even a TV show that acts more like background noise. So choose some nice relaxing music to listen to in the background, grab a cup of tea, light a candle, and do whatever you need to to create an environment that helps you relax. Once your space is set up, the next step is to become mindful and that means to become more present so you can focus on the here and now. Begin by taking a deep breath. Now exhale and feel your body release any tension. Do this slowly and do it several times until you can feel more relaxed. Now you're ready to start. On previous videos, I have not mixed any paints because that can make the whole process a lot more complicated with having to explain color theory and such. And I'm trying to keep the videos as straightforward and easy as possible, but this is going to be quite simple. We're going to change the tone of an already existing color by adding white and making it lighter. That's it. How much white do you add? Well, that depends on how much lighter of a color you want to end up with. Another factor is how dark or light your base color is to start with. So the cascade color is a medium tone, not entirely dark, but not entirely light. I'm going to make the teal blue lighter to apply it to the entire page and make that the background. The color I am using is not a true white either. It is a wedding cake color, which means it is more of a cream tone so i will need a lot more of this color to really make the cascade or teal color even a little lighter so going back to how much white the ratio is something that you have to simply experiment with but it is about 75 percent white and 25 percent teal i'm also trying to put enough paint so that i only need to make one batch of paint because if i run out and need to mix more chances are that i won't make it a perfect match it may be a tad darker or a tad lighter and that's not really what i want so i'm also going uh, to be mixing the the colors really really well so that when i apply them i don't have any streaks of dark or white i'm going for a solid background here if i were trying to have some texture the variance in tone would be nice but that's not part of this exercise so i hope i've explained this as thoroughly as possible now you can go ahead and give it a try once you have everything mixed you can go ahead and apply the light teal blue and cover the entire spread glide the brush from the inside out so that you don't get any paint trapped under the pages of the sketchbook on my other videos i mentioned the use of a craft dryer which is a great tool to move things along but you can patiently wait for the paint to dry this is a great time to take a few deep breaths, be intentional and think about being present and in the moment and enjoy the steps you're taking to explore your creativity. Pour some of the teal paint on the paper plate. This is straight out of the tube and not mixed with white. You are going to add a bit of water to make it less thick so that it flows on the page and it makes it easier to make the line work of leaves, stems, and flowers that you are going to add next. You may need to load the brush a few times with paint to complete the stroke, and you may need a little blending in to make it seamless. So with the detail brush, you are going to make a long, slightly curved line. This will be one stem. You are now going to add a couple of side stems, a little shorter, 
and flower buds. Paint a few lines inside to show the petals. This should be on a vertical direction. The stem should have an odd number of buds, like three, three five, seven. It's always better to work with odd numbers. They just visually work better. Now make another stem that curves in a slightly opposite direction and it's a bit shorter. Add one or two or three buds here as well. Now make a couple of more stems that are going in different directions and paint leaves on these. You are only outlining the leaves. You're not really filling anything in. You're just, um, it's, it's basically like you are painting or doodling with a marker, but it's with paint. You could use a marker for this though as well, but I'm trying to keep the amount of materials you use to a minimum to show you that you don't need a bunch of materials to complete a project. I mean, it's nice to have a paint collection and a variety of brushes and markers. I know I don't mind having an excuse to make a run to the store. It's definitely fun. It's one of my other happy place to go to the art store, but you can do it with minimal paints, minimal materials. All these flowers are painted only in one color because they're supposed to sit in the background and add visual interest, but not distract from the elements on the page that will be placed after. These will have a lot more color and a lot more detail. In all my videos, I use a limited color palette and all of the art projects are more illustrative. These are, this entire beginner series are focused on a more illustrative style, which gives you more creative freedom than trying to achieve a more realistic landscape or portrait. Art comes in many styles and forms. Now rinse the brush and um, load it with the clover truffle color. This is the green color or a similar color really. And make slightly more upright lines this time, but not completely vertical. Add leaves and stems for flowers alternating. So basically we're doing exactly the same thing that we did before, but we're doing it with a different color and the leaves are gonna be different and the flowers are gonna be different, but the line work is gonna be very similar. We're not going to make the stems as curved. These ones are gonna be slightly more upright just because uh, these are slightly different flowers basically. So when you add the flowers, you're gonna end up putting them in the direction of the stems. So if the stem is slightly curved down, then the flower is gonna be facing down. If the stem is upright, then the flower is gonna be upright. And changing them up like this will give you the variety that uh, will make the flowers more organic and natural looking. And that's something that will make your composition more interesting and less boring. I know it may not seem like a lot of work, but each one of these videos takes me a few hours to put together between recording the session, the editing, um, the voiceover, which I'm still working on. I feel like I'm not incredibly great at because I don't know, every time I think we all have a thing with our voices, right? We hear ourselves and we just like cringe. But in any case, I do enjoy the process and I, I love putting together these videos and I would love for you to show your appreciation by pressing the like button and by subscribing if you haven't done so. I know it may seem insignificant, but that small act shows me that I am putting together content that you're enjoying and that it encourages, you know, and what it really does, it encourages me to make more content like that. So it also tells YouTube that people find value with my content and it will show it to other people, which really would help me because I want to reach as many people as possible. So thank you so much for, again, just taking a small second to press that like button. I really appreciate it. Once you have about four stems spread out on the page, change brushes and paints. So now we're going to move on to the medium yellow and add a tad of yellow oxide. That's about 10% or 15% ratio. This is to tone down the yellow. If you have, uh, let's just say you don't have this color, a tiny amount of black would work as well. About 3% or 5%, black is really strong and a little bit goes a long, long way. So mix it really well with the smaller square brush. 
Now start the flowers by making a U with the stem right in the middle of the bottom of the U. This is exactly what we talked about before. And if you've not watched uh, any of my other videos, this is a completely new concept. I've explained the U shape before in another one of uh, my flower videos. But in any case, fill in the U and use the edge of the square brush to mark the edge of the petals. This is where you get to have a little bit of fun with the placement of the flowers, the petals, the whole thing, all of it. You also vary the size of the flowers. Some are larger, some are smaller, and in some cases, make them into an oval with a pointy end. Those are buds getting ready to open. So just have fun, change it up, and take your time. Flowers can open up so many different possibilities when it comes to painting and creative expression. Since they, they come in all kinds of colors, shapes, and sizes, and they just give us that freedom to not have to be so exact. So I, that's what I love about flowers, that it, it, even, even the messy flower, it still gives us that, that freedom of expression and we are still able to recognize it as a flower. So my flowers are loosely based on reality. I mean, I say loosely because really they're not an exact, uh, I don't think my flowers really exist, exist in this world, only on, in my world. Um, and sometimes I work from reference, but in this case, I am not. Um, so I'm taking some artistic licenses here and making up my own flower, and I'm encouraging you to do the same. You can even pick a completely different color for your flowers, uh, red, pink, purple, blue, I mean, whatever color you want, really. I picked yellow because it is primarily associated with happiness and joy. And I hope you are able to feel the joy and happiness as you paint these flowers. You deserve it. It is also the ideal color for symbolizing friendship. So you could use yellow flowers on a note card that you're gonna give a friend, for example. This is a great time to do a mental check of where you're feeling any kind of stress in your body. And if you're still feeling any stress, this is a time to take a few more deep breaths, very slow, deep breaths. Use the craft dryer to dry all the paint. You may need to touch up the yellow with a second coat to make the flowers solid and not translucent. And you'll need to use the craft dryer again to make sure everything is dry before we add more flowers. Okay, so now it is time for some overlapping. So go back to the green and the round thin brush and add a couple of more stems with leaves like you did before. You're gonna do this throughout the page in a few places, and you should have enough stems on the page that when you add the flowers, some will overlap and touch other flowers. The stems might even overlap leaves or other stems. That's what you want, a busy foreground. Now that you have all the stems that are going to overlap, go ahead and add the flowers now. Dry them and touch them up with a second coat if need be. Again, as before, just enjoy the process. Have fun with it. Really be present in, in the moment by focusing on the flowers, the colors, uh, the position of the flowers on the page, the composition, and that alone, just using a different part of your brain and the repetition should really help you relax and unwind. Rinse the brush and pour a little of the summer porch on the plate. This is the light yellow, and if you don't have a color like that, you can use the medium yellow and add some of the wedding cake or white to lighten up the yellow. This is going to be your highlight. Don't worry, we're not going to blend it in. That's not part of this exercise. We're just going to apply it as uneven brush strokes, just kind of like a chunk of paint, basically, or an uneven shape that follows the border of the petals and a bit of the edge. Just watch what I'm doing here. 
it's kind of hard to explain and it's different for every flower because each flower has a slightly different shape but all the flowers should have a, a slightly different highlight as well so if the light is coming from the top then the highlight should be towards the top of the flower i might go more in more in depth about lighting on a future video but not not today not for this exercise for now all you need to know is that the light is from the top so the highlight is going to be at the top if you would like to see a more detailed explanation of lighting and maybe just a specific exercise on that you can write it in the comments leave me a note and i'll consider it for a future video so here we are at the end of another guided, creative, and relaxing exercise with me, Adrian. Look at what you've done. You've tried something new, you stepped out of your comfort zone, and hopefully you had fun in the process. If you enjoyed painting these flowers, make sure to check out my other videos in this series, particularly the one with white roses. I think you will really like it. Thanks for watching and relaxing with art.